net prescription is actually we dilute not just wokeism. I mean, that's just part of the story. We dilute secular religions, the rise of secular religions. Right. And, and I don't call them even religions because the religion has withstood the test of time. A cult has not. But the rise of modern secular cults, we dilute them to irrelevance by filling that void with an alternative vision. And so, you know, if one political camp might offer race and gender and sexuality and climate as a prescription for the void, I think where conservatives fall badly short is by simply being anti those things without actually offering an alternative vision of our own. And I am aiming certainly to do that in this if campaign. If you were going to replace family. race and yep. gender and these kind of things, what would be your, uh, you know, qualities or things to focus on? So, so let's do like a little face off, right? Individual yeah, sure. <laughs> talk, talk about race, gender, sexuality, climate. I pair them up against individual family, nation, God. Okay. And I think that there's a substantive vision here. I think America happened to have been founded on the latter vision, not the former. So if I'm running for US president, I think that that already tilts the scales in favor of this vision because it so happens as a historical matter, America was grounded on, you know, some people will contest this, but I think on that vision rather than the genetic and climate based one. But I think that that's something where the Republican Party and conservatives have fallen short. And that's part of what, to your question, Jason, pulled me into this is I saw the emergence of what was likely to be a biographical brawl between two guys who were the you know front runners or whatever. You know, that's not productive. But I think more importantly than a biographical brawl, even the question about who we are, I think the Republican Party and the conservative movement was in many ways defining itself in opposition to that alternative vision of identity, where what I want to do, what I'm striving to do, and I hope we're doing, is actually offering an affirmative vision of our own that go to the heart of what it means to be an American. And, you know, I don't think that national identity alone is going to fill that vacuum fully, but I think it makes a pretty good darn stride forward. And I think there's roles for pastors and others that's beyond my pay grade. <laughs> and so I'm not, I'm not purporting to do that in this campaign. I speak to it, but that's, that's going to be the role of people in a higher calling than being U.S. president. But I think the next U.S. president can play a meaningful role in filling that vacuum at least when it comes to national identity. And so that's really what this campaign is about. It's not, it's not anti-woke. It is unapologetically nationalist in a certain sense of that word. Nationalist in the sense of embracing those ideals that set this nation into motion that still unite us across those genetically inherited attributes that we've otherwise celebrated over the last 10 years in this Safe country. Safe to say you believe in American exceptionalism and that's, that's your platform for running That is my for. platform. That is that absolutely is platform. my platform. The exceptionalism of the ideals that set this country into motion. Absolutely.